Let's start off with the uh, the pin badge you're wearing, I guess. Can you just talk us a little bit about what you're doing in this deadline day, this different deadline day? Yes, Cancer Deadline Day. Um, it's a, a, an initiative where eight cancer charities all together have, have come together, with prostate cancer being one of those, um, to, to try and raise some, some valuable funds at the moment. Because obviously, with what's going on at the moment, a lot of charities have taken a big hit. Uh, and hopefully this initiative can, um, can try and you know, fill, a, fill a gap in the funding, if you like, um, and, and trying to get football fans, football clubs involved um, to uh, to just raise some some funds to be able to help, obviously, people that are, are struggling in these really strange times. Yeah, and cancer affects everyone. If it, even if it doesn't affect you directly, everyone in their life is going to be impacted by someone they love being impacted by some sort of cancer. And the work you've done with prostate cancer has done a lot of good, I think, raising awareness. I think I think the last few years have been have been a, a very good campaign in, in raising awareness of, of prostate. Obviously, it's the the most commonly diagnosed cancer now, um, and I think it was, you know, a few years ago, very few people had heard about it, um, and the campaign has been excellent. I think the awareness has has been raised, um, and you know, we we would still urge people now, you know, go if you're of an age, you know, like uh, like I am now, uh, and I went to my doctor's, um, I think it was the year before last. Uh, and just go and get checked, you know, just just go and have a, an appointment with your, your GP and um, and just keep a, keep an eye on it. Because sometimes, you know, these things, obviously, with, with cancers, they can creep up on you with, with very few symptoms. So uh, it's important to, to get checked. Danny isn't a one club man, but he is a Southampton boy. But he he's 28. He's tasted Liverpool. He's obviously, well, he didn't get the taste he wanted, I guess, because of injuries. Do you understand? Oh, I guess you've seen the stories that have come out, and and if so, what what was your take? Yeah, I haven't seen any direct quotes from Danny about it. Um, so uh, so when, when there's no direct quotes from anybody, I tend to take things with a pinch of salt. I haven't been in that industry myself. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there's going to be a, a concern from Saints fans because he has been the the talismanic goal scorer for the last couple of seasons and uh, and his form has been excellent and when somebody is scoring a lot of goals at, at Southampton then again it's just like the manager situation they are going to get interest from from bigger clubs uh, who can pay more money and the only thing that the fans can hope for is that is that Danny also has that connection with the football club uh, and he feels the love around the football club um, and that hopefully you know he signs a, a new deal at our club um, you know, that's obviously something that's that's out of everybody's hands, apart from the uh, apart from the financial people at the club. So um, it's yeah, it's always concerning when when there's rumours that you know one of your best players is going to be leaving the football club because you wonder how you're going to replace them. But you know, we've had these uh, situations many times in the past. You know, um, how are we going to replace Ricky Lambert? Um, you know, but we've we've managed to still go on, stay in the Premier League, uh, establish ourselves uh, after having lost players like Lambert and Lallana, you know, the, the centre-backs that we've lost in Van Dijk and Lovren. Um, so, you know, it, it'll be one of those things, but if it, if it happens, we just have to, we just have to move on. And I think, um, you know, I think Ralph said the same thing, you know, life goes on, you know, players come and go and uh, you just have to keep working to find people to replace them. No, and the funny thing is, it, all the reports you read do suggest that it's not the fact that he's unhappy. In fact, he loves it at Southampton. It's just there is that nagging what if. Um, when you look back at your career, and I know you've been asked this a thousand times, but can you understand why he might think what if? Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's a perfectly natural uh, reaction to have. Um, but, you know, sometimes the, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Um, you look at, at kind of the direction that Ricky Lambert's career went in after he after he went to Liverpool. You know that that, that didn't the way go the way that he hoped it went, uh, and I'm sure you know he he probably has second thoughts now. I mean, of course, it was his you know, it was his ambition to play for Liverpool and all that stuff. But in terms of what happened with his career after he left Saints, um, you know, I, I'm I'm not sure if he uh, if he doesn't look back now and think, oh, maybe I could have had another three really good years at Saints. Uh, as opposed to the three years that he kind of had drifting out the team and struggling with injuries elsewhere. 